There you are. Look, I don't know if you're like me, but there are two words in the English language which I find really scary. The first one is tax, and the other is computer. Now, I don't suppose it'll ever be possible to make anybody feel cosy about tax, but by the end of this video, hopefully we're all going to have a much better idea about home computers, what to look for, whether we even really need one, and all that sort of stuff. And if bits, bytes, rams, and noms make your head spin, don't worry. All will be revealed in the home computer minefield. The home computer minefield is a sort of live action computer game which we're going to play with the help of the Jackson family. Hi. Hello. What we're going to do is evaluate a whole range of these electronic gadgets and by a process of elimination arrive at the one home computer that's got the lot. And when I say elimination, we're not kidding, believe me. But first of all, what are we looking for from a home computer? Games! Games. Games, yeah, games. What's all the fuss about computer games? Bring back battleships, that's what I say. You want a computer that does more than just play games? I mean, they don't play games on them at school, do they? Uh, not really. Right, so apart from games, what else? Well, if I'm going to spend real money on it, I'd like to be able to do some work, you know, business. Housekeeping, bank finances and things. Boring. Business things, bank statements. Ah, a sort of home office then. Fair enough. Uh, what else? It might be good for studying. We use computers at school, and a lot of my friends do their projects at home on them. Would you use a computer for your studies? Yes, and games. You are games mad, aren't you? All right, so we're looking for a pretty powerful, multi-purpose home computer. Now, the experts will tell you that you need a 32-bit RISC multimedia computer. But that probably won't mean a thing to you, will it? No. Didn't think so. So, just so you won't get baffled by the jargon, when you go into a computer shop, just remember Tame Sprogs. What must you remember? Tame, Tame Sprogs. That's right. Uh, any idea what it means? No clue. No. Tame Sprogs means T is for 32-bit risk. That means it's very powerful and very fast. If a computer hasn't got it, don't buy it. A is for affordable. A proper computer doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg, although some salesmen may try and tell you otherwise. M is for multimedia. Computers nowadays handle more than just words and graphics. You'd want one which can deliver audio as well as video. E is for education. A lot of computers simply don't have enough relevant educational programs to make them a worthwhile investment. Right, that's tame. Now for Sprogs. S is for a software. A computer's only as good as the information it's given, so make sure there's a good range of software programs for it to work with. P is for... Panic? Come on now, it's not that bad, is it? P is for personal productivity. R is for reliability, which obviously everybody understands. And O is for office applications. Pretty straightforward then. G is for... Game. <laughs> well done. And the other S is for service and support. In other words, only buy from a reputable established company that's going to be around for quite a while. There, that's it. That's what Tame Sprogs means. And we'll come back to that when we finally identify the winner and use it as a checklist. Now, you're going to buy a computer to do the things you want, and the first thing you wanted was games. That's right, remember, Craig's games mad, aren't you? So, we've chosen seven home computers, and the first thing we are going to do is to see just how good they are at games, and we will record the result on our home computer scoreboard. There you are, one to seven represents the seven computers. Okay then, let's hit level one of the home computer minefield, games.
Now, for some strange reason, a lot of people think that the best games can only be played on Nintendo or Sega machines. So, Craig, what's your favourite game? Um, Lemmings. OK, Craig, I want you to play Lemmings on the Nintendo. Go and have a shot. And now the PC. And the Amiga. And now the Atari. And now Sega. And now the Acorn. And try the Apple. OK, Craig, time's up. Now then, to win this level of the home computer minefield, answer this question. What is the difference between those seven games of Lemmings? You've got ten seconds. I must mm, hurry you. There's no difference, really. Correct! Except, strangely enough, games cartridges for Sega and Nintendo tend to cost more than the discs do for home computers. Right, they're all good at games, as you can see from the game scoreboard, but we've got to move on to level two, which is all about business and home office applications, such as word processing. Unfortunately, computer number one, Nintendo, number three, Amiga, number four, Atari, and number five, Sega, whilst they're great little machines, they don't do the whole job for office applications and personal productivity. So there's no point in them continuing. So Craig, do me a favour and uh, eliminate them, will you? With this. Press the fire button. There, I said we wouldn't muck about when it came to a process of elimination. Give me that, you. Now on to level two, the office. So let's look at the business and home office scoreboard and update it. And you can see only number two, the PC, number six, Acorn, and number seven, Apple, are left in. Right, now the thing about office applications is that although they are terrifically important and useful, they don't make awfully good television. So what we're going to do is to get three similar computers to design and print a press release about this video. So first of all, I'll need a picture of you lot. So in you come. Katie, smile a bit. Thank you. Lovely. Fantastic. Yep. And uh, now a headline, yeah. Something like Jackson's in Computer Video Shock Horror. Yeah, why not? That'll do. And because we're a bit pushed for time, I think we'll use a, a page of my script as text. And that's a picture, a headline, some text. Anything else we need? An autograph. Autograph. Oh, good idea. Right. Um, yours or mine? Yours. Yours. OK, oh, cool, yeah, I suppose I'll get a pen. Right, what's my name again? Oh, that's right, John Leslie. Fine, so I've got everything. Um, I'll just pop off to get the film developed. Uh, I'll be back in a minute. Don't go away. OK, the prints are back. They're all scanned in. So, to your computers, Mum, Dad, Katie, and Craig, a special job for you. So, starting positions then for an acorn, an apple, and a PC. Fine. Craig, count them down, please. Three, two, one, go! What you're watching here is an example of what they call DTP, or desktop publishing, which obviously you could use for anything from party invitations to putting together a whole magazine. But there are literally thousands of serious business applications, from accounting to forecasting. You remember we used to watch uh, The Man From U.N.C.L.E. and you had walls and walls of what looked like big, jerky, reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders? Well, the sort of computers we're talking about today are much, much more powerful and you can have them at home. Isn't progress frightening? Yeah, but I like it. Aha! Here comes the first one from the Acorn. My word, that was quick. Let's have a look. What about that real professional job? Oh, yeah, good. Flattering picture, mind. What do you think? 
and the rest, yes, um, not too bad. And finally, last but not least, great, well that's all three, they look pretty similar to me. But what do you think? Which is best? I think they're all good. I'm surprised. I thought the apple would be much better. Actually, they are all basically the same, which is very good. You can even bring, say, your word processing or your spreadsheets from the office and work on them at home. So all three can handle office applications and improve your own personal productivity. So they all score full marks on our scoreboard, which is uh, more than those other four did. Sorry we fell up, you can't blow anything up yet. They all go through to the next level of the home computer minefield. Right then, here are our three finalists. Computer number two, the PC, number six, the Acorn, and number seven, the Apple. And they're all in the final because they can all play games and can handle office applications, which leaves us with just education. If you want to give your kids a head start, a home computer must be able to deliver education. Craig and Katie, Here's a stack of educational software. All the programs are specifically designed for the UK curriculum. Stand back, not yet. Nothing could be simpler. Okay, you've got two minutes to sort them out into an apple pile, a PC pile, and an acorn pile. Am I making myself perfectly clear? Yes. Yes, yes what? Yes, yes, sir. Go to it. You see, what would really give a computer a massive advantage in education is if everything about it, from the chip to the operating system to the software applications, were designed by experts who knew how to make education fun. That is precisely the case with Acorn. And just to prove how wide their range of software applications is, this pile here is just the information technology part of the UK curriculum. Imagine how tall that pile would be if you added all the subjects. Well, let's combine the PC and Apple piles. Nope, they still do not stack up. They don't have the software, they just don't have the education. And look how that is reflected in the final score. So, would you two go over there and leave us with a clear winner? Wait for it. Fire! And that winner is... Acorn. And just to prove that education is fun on an Acorn, just sit back and have a look at this. Watch carefully, then find out how you can win a £500 bundle of Acorn software. Of course, right from the start of the home computer minefield, we've emphasised that we're talking about proper computers. Now, because most of the computers used in UK schools are Acorn, in fact, it's comfortably the number one school computer, some people reckon they're not proper. So it might interest you to know that the RAF and the Treasury... Oh dear, there's that scary word again, tax. Anyway, they use Acorn Kit. He made too much noise and lots of black smoke. Blue. Sock. Sock. We've already demonstrated that the Acorn can certainly play games, does a great job in office applications, and is a head and shoulders winner in education. It's fair to say that Acorn is the great all-rounder of all home computers, and what's more, it's 100% British.
Control Challenger. Houston now, Control Inmate. So, to win the 500 pounds Acorn Software Bundle, go back to that bit where we showed you all those educational applications. We want to know the name of the software program which turned the Ordnance Survey map into a three-dimensional picture. It's a one-word name. When you think you've got it, fill in the entry card you got with this video, send it in, and if you're right, you'll go into the draw for the software. So, do you feel a bit more confident now about choosing a computer? Tames Sprogs, John, that's all you've got to remember. Good point. I said at the beginning we would use Tames Sprogs as a checklist against the winner, Acorn. 32-bit risk. Check. Affordable. The Acorn starts from as little as £399, which is quite amazing. Multimedia. Well, you've seen examples of that. Education. Unbeatable, as I think we've proved. Software. Over 2,500 titles. So many, the catalogues like a phone book. Personal productivity. Well, you lot have made a fine press release already. Reliability. The Acorns passed the torture test of millions of school kids. So in my book, that means reliable. Office applications? Yes. Games? Craig? Check. Check. Service and support? Yes. Acorn is a long-established British company which is thoroughly committed to its customers, which all added up totals 10 out of 10.